Had we finished the rap quiz a little earlier, I would have elaborated on number five. And so I'm, I'm going to do that via screencast. So um, I don't know that many groups had problems with this one, but I, I want to use it as a launching point to get at the basics of monopoly actions, decisions in, in our introductory economic framework. So um, this question, what, which one is true? The invisible hand leads monopoly market outcomes to be allocatively and productively e efficient? No, they're inefficient for reasons we'll talk at some length about. Uh, the profit maximizing output rule produce where marginal revenue equals marginal cost is the same for perfectly competitive firms and monopolies. As I mentioned in class, that one's true, and I'm going to come back to that. Um, just as we did when analyzing perfectly competitive firms, we must, must analyze uh, monopoly perceived demand as different from market demand. That's quite false, too. Now that there's only one producer for the whole market, we can map firm uh, level cost and output decisions in the same framework as uh, the market demand. So let, let's explore that a little bit via this in, in the screencast. So let, let's document that. So now the, the monopolist faces the entirety of market demand. And market demand is downward sloping law of demand. And let's just say that um, the monopoly marginal cost function looks like the marginal cost function of firms we've studied all along. And that, you know, that's fair enough. Um, all right, what's, that, the, the marginal cost tells us the, the cost of producing one more unit. But the, the key question here is what's the benefit of producing one more unit? And the benefit of producing one more unit is the marginal revenue associated with producing one more unit. And the, the marginal revenue for a monopolist is not the market price. For a perfectly competitive firm, it was the market price. You produce one more unit of output, you get the market price for it. You're so small that market price is not depressed at all. Okay, but it, that's not the case for the monopolist. The monopolist faces this downward sloping demand curve and the monopolist knows that it, that it has to um, reduce price if it's going to sell more units of output. And that, that means that any time the monopolist increases output, there's going to be some new items sold, and that's going to bring in new revenues. But the monopolist is going to have to lower the price of stuff it already had been selling at a higher price, and that's going to be a discount. So the, the marginal revenue is going to be the price for the new unit, less whatever discounting the monopolist has had to do on whatever it was producing before. As it turns out, for a, for a monopoly firm, and I'll, I'll explore this point a little bit more deeply in the new screen in a second, the, the marginal revenue for a monopolist, if we have a linear demand curve, which generally will work with those, not because they're, they exist in the real world, but because they're easy to work with, um, a marginal revenue function for a monopolist has the same y-intercept somewhere up there as the demand curve, but then it's twice as steep. So that's, that's just a regularity that comes out of the math that I'm not going to require you to know. But um, the point is the marginal revenue is everywhere below the demand curve. And notice that the distance between the demand and the marginal revenue grows as output grows. And that's simply there's more product to discount as we produce more. All right, so what's our, our monopolist decision? Well, notice that early on, it costs $2 to make an, a unit of output that the firm could get, the, remember the benefit, the marginal revenue, the change of revenue that results from producing one more unit, could get $8 for. Well, that's a good deal, right? So we'll increase output as long as marginal revenue is greater than marginal cost. Even if it's, if I get $2.50 by spending Two dollars and forty cents. Well, that's still a good deal, right? If I I got to produce a lot of output, but I'm going to increase profits when I do. Remember, we're talking about all relevant economic costs. All right. Well, that's going to get us back to this marginal revenue equals marginal cost output rule. If the monopolist is going to produce at all, it's going to produce where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Now, so that's the output of the monopolist. Notice that the price charged. For that output, the monopolist is, is going to charge whatever the market can bear for that output. So the price the monopolist charge is way up high, price P sub M. So just remember, a lot, a lot of students want to say, oh, price equal marginal cost, because we've been doing 
competitive analysis, and that's generally what happens. But remember, John D. Rockefeller didn't get rich by pricing at cost. No way. He, he, if you're a monopolist and you want to get rich, you charge everything the market can bear uh, and still sell your desired quantity of output. So that's the monopolist output decision. Let me just briefly show you profits. Um, profits look like they look before in this framework, right? If, if the firm's got let me change color pen. We'll go to orange again. If the firm has has this average cost function of the usual shape, well, profits again. Average profit is diff difference between price and average cost at that level of output. If we want to know that's average profit, if we want to know. The total profit, we just look at that average profit overall, multiply by output produced, we get this orange rectangle. Looks just like we did it did before. And indeed it is the same, the same analytics that we did before. So nothing new there. All right, let's just explore that concept of why marginal revenue is below price for a monopolist. Here we go at a new screen. All right. Uh, let's get that marginal, well, let's get that demand curve for the market, which is the demand curve faced by the monopolist. I don't know, I'm too tired to think of a product, but dollars per unit is the price. Units per month is, is the level of output. Demand curve is downward sloping. And let's just say the monopolist is producing at some price and quantity, whatever that price and quantity is. All right, so that's that's the initial situation. You know, what's going to happen to revenue if that monopolist produces one more unit? Let's change color. Orange seems to be the color of choice today, for me anyway. Um, let's say one more unit of output would be there. So this is Q naught plus one. All right, there's a single price monopolist. You know, some firms can pass multiple prices to different types of consumers. And anyway, so now the the to sell one more unit of output because the firm faces a downward sloping demand curve, the, the monopolist has to lower price. And this vertical tall skinny rectangle is the price P1, and that's the revenue that the firm gets for the new output sold. And that's called the quantity effect. Actually, we have a name for this. That's the quantity effect, uh, the, the increase in revenues that result from results from selling more output. Or if we were considering shrinking output, that would be the revenues you'd lose by shrinking quantity. Um, but there's this other effect that's going on that, for the monopolist that didn't go on for the um, perfect competitor. I'm going to use green uh, here. So notice that that Increasing output meant lowering price on all this stuff we used to be able to sell at P0. Now we have to lower the price to P1. So we've had to discount that. And that's lost. That's, that's money we don't have anymore. So that's called, there's two words for this. That's Sometimes you see this called the discount effect for obvious reasons. Sometimes you, you see this called the price effect. And again, that refers to the fact that if a monopolist is considering increasing output, they've got a lower price. This is for a single price monopolist, and they lose revenues on what they had been selling at a higher price. The, similarly, if a monopolist is thinking about reducing output, yeah, they give up this revenue associated with the quantity they're not producing anymore, but they gain back. They don't have to discount anymore as heavily because they, they're producing less. So that's why marginal revenue is less than price. The quantity effect is the price of the new units sold but we have to subtract off this discount effect to get marginal revenue.